What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam. I'm a full-time six-figure eBay and Shopify seller. And what I do on this channel is help you make money on either eBay or Shopify. So make sure you subscribe down below. What I'm gonna be talking about in today's video is a question that I get all the time. I made a video showing how to find suppliers on Alibaba, mainly based in China. And after that, a lot of people have contacted me asking me, how do we deal with expensive shipping rates if we wanna import stock from China? So what I'm gonna do is basically break down my thoughts on what I think about it. I'm still importing stock from China with no issues, even though the prices of shipping has increased. So what I'm gonna do as a full-time eBay seller is break down my thoughts and let you know everything you need to know when it comes to dealing with expensive shipping rates. Make sure you watch the whole video from start to finish because I'm gonna break down a lot of information that you guys need to know. As always, I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'm gonna jump right into it. If you find any value in the video at any point, I'd really appreciate it if you can press the like button. It really helps out the channel in a big way, allows me to make more content just like this to help you guys out. Whilst you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss all the weekly videos that I'm gonna be releasing to help you make money on either eBay or Shopify. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So if you've been watching me for some time, you'll know that I prefer to import stock and sell the goods on eBay rather than dropship it directly from the supplier. I do dropship when it comes to selling on Shopify now and then, but what I mainly do is I import stock from Alibaba using suppliers in China. A lot of people have watched my video when it comes to finding a new supplier on alibaba.com. I'm gonna link it above if you wanna watch it after this video. A lot of people have watched that video They've contacted suppliers and the rates when it comes to shipping is too high. A lot of people feel like they can't make profit because the shipping rates are too high. I'm still importing stock every week or every two weeks from overseas. What I wanna do in this video is share two or three things that you guys need to know or you guys need to think about when it comes to dealing with high shipping rates that you get quoted from the suppliers in China. So once you found the winning product that you wanna sell and you started contacting suppliers, there's two ways that the supplier is gonna be able to import the products to you. The first way is by sea and the second way is by air. Me personally, I've never used sea freight before because it takes way too long. It takes around 30 to 60 days for the goods to leave China and then eventually reach you in whatever country you're based in. Because I'm based in the UK, I believe it takes around 40 days for me to receive the goods by sea. But if I was to import the stock using air freight, I'm gonna normally receive it within five to seven days. So this is the method that I normally go with. The three main companies that suppliers will use in China that do air freight is DHL, FedEx, and UPS. These are the three main companies that I personally use to import stock from China to the UK. Bear in mind that sea freight is a lot more cheaper than air freight because it takes so long. So the shipping rate is a lot more cheaper. Air freight is a lot more expensive. This is the method that I still use. So a lot of people have questions about how am I able to make a profit if I'm using companies like DHL, FedEx, and UPS, which is a lot more expensive than me importing the stock by sea. I'm gonna jump into a couple of things that I personally do to remain profitable when it comes to selling on eBay and importing goods right now, especially that the shipping rates are really expensive. So the first thing that I want you guys to bear in mind when it comes to communicating with suppliers and getting quotes for shipping from them is that you don't have to use the first supplier that you find. If you start contacting suppliers on Alibaba and they offer you a price that's too high, you can always contact many, many other suppliers. I never use the first supplier that I come across. What I try to do is get quotes from at least three or five or even seven different suppliers. Not every single supplier in China has the same connections as another supplier. A lot of the suppliers in China are able to get better shipping rates due to the connections and relationships that they have with their forwarders in China. The freight forwarders are the ones that have the direct communication with the companies like UPS, DHL and FedEx. The supplier is the one that gives the goods to the freight forwarders and the freight forwarders are the ones that pass the goods onto the companies like UPS, FedEx and DHL. So the supplier doesn't actually communicate with these shipping companies. So this is another thing that you guys need to bear in mind is that you need to contact different suppliers because not every single supplier has the same forwarder and not every forwarder has the same relationship with all these shipping companies. So if you've tried to contact as many suppliers as possible and you're not able to find the cheapest price possible in terms of the shipping rate or even the product price. The next thing I want you guys to be aware of is how are you branding your company? Because if you brand your company around the product that you're trying to import, you'll be able to charge whatever price you want. So what I'm gonna do now is jump into the MacBook and I'm gonna show you an example of two people that are trying to sell the same product. One is at a higher price and they've sold more and one is at a lower price and they sold less. What I want you guys to take from what I'm gonna show you is that even though the shipping price is high, all you have to do is price your item at a higher price and you're only gonna be able to do that if you brand your item properly. So what I'm gonna do now is jump in and show you two examples. So let's do that right now. All right guys, so I've just jumped over to eBay and what I'm gonna show you is two listings for the same product. And the product that we're looking at is a dog coat, keeps them warm in the winter. Here's an example of what they look like right here. As you can see, this seller sold 1,000 
414 of this particular item and they've sold two in the last hour and you can see their name right there it says real pet store so straight away we know that this company is a pet store and they specialize in selling pet products so what i want to do now is show you the price of what they're selling it for which is 13 pounds and 99 pence so this is the price they're selling it for this is how many they've sold and they've sold two in the last hour at this price point right here, £13.99. What I'm gonna do now is jump over to the listing that isn't doing so well, but they're charging a cheaper price, just so that you guys can understand that even though you guys are gonna be charging a higher price, it doesn't really matter. As long as you brand your store correctly and you make sure the customer knows that you're a specialist in that product so that they can have more trust in your quality and your service. So let me go over to the listing that isn't doing so well. Okay, so as you can see, it's the same product. So what I'm gonna show you now is the price point, which is at 11 99 which i believe is two pounds cheaper than the one that we just looked at this seller hasn't sold any it says that they've got four available and you can see by the name of their store it says michael elliott 16 even though they're selling it at a cheaper price they haven't branded their store correctly they haven't branded their store in the right way to let customers know that they can even trust their quality so even though this seller is selling it for a higher price two pounds more they're still selling more and they've sold 1,414. So this is what I want you guys to bear in mind. Even though the price of shipping the item from China to the US or the UK or wherever you're based is gonna be a lot, it doesn't mean that you can't factor that into the price point that you're gonna sell it at or even sell it for even higher. When I import my products, even though the shipping rate is really, really high, it doesn't really matter because I've branded all my eBay stores in a way that I'm a specialist with the products that I sell. So I can price my items at any price point that I want and still make a sell and factor in the higher shipping price. As you can see, this seller's charging a lot more than other sellers. This seller's not really taking their business serious. They're using their name, their full name, in fact, as their business name. You just need to understand how to brand your business. And once you do, you're gonna be able to charge whatever price you really want, to be honest. So you're probably thinking, okay, Sam, they've named their store Real Pet Store, but what else have they done to brand their store in a way that they can charge a higher price? So what I'm gonna do now is just show you a little bit more of what I mean when I say brand in your store. I'm gonna click into the actual shop where it says visit shop right there. And as you can see, they've got their logo, they've got their store banner right here. They've got a picture of a dog and a cat and they sell mainly pet products. As you can see right there, all of this is just pet products, a lot of harnesses, leashes. Most of their keywords have like puppy and dog dog toys. So any customer that clicks into this business's shop is going to trust their products a lot more because they obviously specialize in selling pet products. You know, a lot of people when it comes to buying products for their dogs or their cats, they want to make sure that they're buying it from a trusted place. And this company has positioned themselves in a way that they can charge whatever they want because they're obviously specializing in dog and pet products. If you spend time on building your store in a way to give the customer the perceived perception that you're a specialist, even though you're a beginner, as long as you make sure you brand your store in the right way in terms of the right logo, the right banner, the right products, make sure everything is in sync, you'll be able to now charge whatever price you want and the shipping price wouldn't really matter. And there you have it guys. I hope now you have a better understanding of how you need to think about high shipping rates when it comes to contacting suppliers using Alibaba. I hope I've broken down everything and you guys have a better understanding. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. If you found any value in the video and now you have a better understanding of how you need to think about high shipping rates, don't forget to press the like button as it really helps me out in a big way. I'll really appreciate that. While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss all the weekly videos that I'm gonna bring out to help you make money on either eBay or Shopify. Don't forget to add me on Instagram as well, guys. I'll see you next week. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.